some point in, uh, I don't remember if it was the Sacred Cow finale or Denver, one of those big videos, I said, like, the idea of that was to put to bed the going insane in your room genre. I said in one of those videos, we're done going insane in our rooms now, boys. We're going out sane. We're going out sane. We're not going insane anymore. We're going out sane. Uh, you're wondering why my channel... I was wondering this. Why did my channel stop being nuts guy rambles about Eris or whatever? And became... What, let's do a video about what does Nick Land believe? Or let's do a video about Linux. Let's do a video about top five anime memes or whatever. You know, still not traditional YouTube. Still with the occasional seven hour long vlog. But those vlogs are no longer, you know, autobiographical. They are, let's talk about politics, let's talk about philosophy, stuff like that. Because that happened, and I forgot that this is why it happened, because in those vlogs, I was like, I'm done going insane, I'm going out sane now, and that was me going out sane. But I've gone out sane for a while now, didn't really do anything, you know, <laughs> didn't really get me. Turns out going out sane just doesn't get you anywhere. You just, it's a very static process. Now, even if the Lord put it in the earth, <laughs> it's poison. It's all poison. That means you should never smoke anything except the whole toad. We need to start smoking the whole toad. Okay, I'll just ask some questions. Has anyone tried smoking the whole toad? And we don't, we don't listen to women around here. Shout out all my Asians. Shout out Donut Man Can. Shout out Karesu. Shout out Horror Love. Shout out me, because I'm trans Japanese. So you, I have love for all the races. I'm telling you, you couldn't even begin to understand my love for all the races. I'm sorry if that offends you, liberal. I'm sorry, liberal, if that offends you, lip cuck. But I love everyone. I have I have only godly, holy, chaotic love for every, every human being in, on this planet. And that's why they must all die. The idea behind the Elon Musk um, Musk um, simulation theory is conceivably a sufficiently advanced uh, civilization uh, would run ancestor simulations um, and uh, statistically speaking uh, we're more likely to be in an ancestor simulation than to be in the original one. Now I don't find this particularly compelling but I think there's something interesting there's a more interesting version of this there is no anti mimetics division and 55555 now, I've never been particularly into SCPs. Um, you've got memes of memetic contagion. And anti-meme is the opposite. It's something that can't be remembered or spread. Um, and those can also be hazardous, but they're not, you know, they're not always hazardous. They could just be benign. If, if these things were real, if we, like, we can conceptualize that this sort of thing could exist, that there could be concepts out there, um, whether they're, they're physical things or just con concepts or whatever that are anti-mimetic in nature, we wouldn't know about them, and therefore they could technically exist. And if they could exist, uh, I feel like it's like you know, statistically speaking, there are more universes where they exist than where they don't exist. So we should act as if they do exist. This is why I'm I'm announcing the launch of the GCRS anti rheumatics division. You know, back in the day, it used to be this concept that pop music was used to control the population. There was, in the 60s, with the counterculture, they were like, we were making counterculture. And in the 80s, this was like the whole thing, it's like opposing, radically opposing pop music with these like industrial punk no wave shit because it's like deprogramming. They're supposed to deprogram you. That's the, that's what that's what the, the the gay black people were all about with techno. They invented techno as the opposite of pop music. And then what happens? Yeah. It tends to happen when when black people and gay people invent something cool. Is that all, all the people like me, all the, the the straight white men, 
in the world were like, that's cool, and then we were like, we're gonna listen to that now, we're gonna get involved. This is where they fucked up, right? Because this has happened a few times, right? <laughs> back to blues, back to jazz, back to rock and roll, where whitey fucking crackers keep being like, yo, all this black music is so cool, all of these gay musics is so cool. So you know what the gays did? It was a genius move, but they, but it was also a big fuck up. It was, it was a genius move, but it was a fuck up. They started counter signaling. They started counter signaling. Super bubblegum, off pop, Lady Gaga shit. If we signal that we like like the poppiest shit, then Whitey and 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 the cis heck, but Whitey, but Whitey won't fucking co-opt it because they don't want to seem lame for listening to pop music. But then you know what happens? If fucking we did it, we only went and did it anyway. But Whitey, we only went and fucking co-opted it anyway, and that's how you end up with a hundred gecks and Sophie and Charlie XDX and PC music, right? It's all fucking Whitey. But Whitey. Uh, being like, whoa, pop music's cool now. And let me tell you, pop music is not fucking cool, right? We need to get rid of this shit and go back to industrial noises. You need to be listening to this sound, the sound of bread being needed to deprogram yourself from, 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 from fucking pop music. It encourages standardized consensus thought. You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be doing that. That's how you end up. So you end up like like those people. Don't listen to pop music. Instead, listen to the album Acceptably Destructive Hyperdrone by No Thank You and his marvelous band. All this dumb dumb stupid shit, man. Just trying to watch a movie, movie shit. Trying to watch a movie called Decoder. German film from 1984. It's got William Burroughs in it. It's got Genesis P Orridge in it. It's got a bunch of good music. People doing the music. Cyberpunk allegedly. I guess it's I guess it's somewhat cyberpunk, but whack movie. My question, My question has always, always been what been happened to all this shit. shit. <sighs> why why is everything difficult? difficult? Visual novels. Here's my, my new conspiracy theory. Here's my new conspiracy theory. Michael Jackson never existed. There was no such thing as Michael. There was no... There may have at one point been a person called Michael Jackson, but Michael Jackson was not... Many people have assumed the role of Michael Jackson over the years. There is no Michael Jackson in the way that you might think of him. Different people have performed as him. Different people have sung and recorded as him. Different people have written his songs. Um... There is no Michael Jackson, who is the original human VTuber. Uh, it's possible that he, the, the original one died. Maybe the original one, you know, could have been anything. Like, Michael, white Michael Jackson looks nothing like child Mike Jackson 5, black Michael Jackson, right? Like, you wouldn't know if they'd replaced him. And the, like, extensive plastic surgery could very easily be a cover-up for prosthesis and heavy makeup, which is used to disguise the fact that multiple performers, they're basically just dancers. But basically, Michael Jackson isn't a person. Michael Jackson is a singing and dancing style that was invented by a record company. Um, just like Hatsune Miku, it's just a, a, a voice and an image that you could, anyone can, can attach a persona to. That's what Michael Jackson is. Michael Jackson was the original human vocaloid. Um, and, uh, so he's, and notice how anyone can do a Michael Jackson impression, like anyone who can do a Michael Jackson impression can do basically a good Michael Jackson impression, because it's just a, 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 a it's a genius fucking move to, to create a singing style so distinct, um, that, that it creates a person, but there was no Michael Jackson. There never was. Maybe there was, but there wasn't. The Michael Jackson that you know never existed. Why did he work on such eclectic projects? It doesn't make any sense. His career makes zero sense if you think about it for two seconds. Didn't he? He like yeah. It doesn't make any sense. His his music like the music has no consistency. Like it's just it's just 
produced by committee. It's, it, 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 it's almost, it feels like the it feels like a Hatsune Miku discography where a bunch of different people and producers assume the same persona. There is no Michael Jackson, I'm telling you. I think I'm starting to genuinely believe this. It just makes too much sense. See? I'm Michael Jackson, you're Michael Jackson. Only a small shadowy cabal of people know the truth. Um, I'm, I, I think it's possible that they killed him off to prevent the truth from getting out. Or maybe just because his, like, the, it was, you know, the style of music. It's sort of like people don't really make, like, like Vocaloid is a phenomenon that has mostly died out. Obviously, people still make Vocaloid songs, but, like, Miku is nowhere near as popular as Miku once was, right? Uh, but because Miku is entirely fictional and not not no one's pretending that Miku is a real person really, um, it doesn't matter. But if it, if it's Michael Jackson who's slowly fading from popularity, and whose newer songs are sort of like failing to gain traction because the the pop industry has has, has moved on, um, you know people would still be like trying to interview him or whatever. So that's one theory as to why they killed him off as a character. Um, but, but it could be that that was planned from the very beginning, you know? It could be that this that, that the whole, his whole career was planned out from the start and that the, the death was the, the appropriate and timely and very uh, in-character death was, um, you know just a con- constructed to to play up as a final arc a sort of a basically see, seeing how nirvana's success increased maybe it was like their last ditch effort maybe it's their final fantasy 7 remake like they needed some money and so they uh they were like we can always pull the nirvana type beat where it's like once Kurt Cobain died nirvana Got it. They were already really popular, but there was a big boost in their record sales. It always happens. Every time an artist dies, their record sales shoot up. So that's a possibility. Maybe it was like, we know that this is the end of like what we're gonna get. I mean, we can, it's not like they don't. It's not like the record company doesn't make money off of Michael Jackson's music anymore. But maybe they needed a boost in sales or something. As before, they were like, and then we can just settle into the sort of passive royalties. I don't know. Um. But yeah, it's likely that there were multiple different performers playing Michael Jackson at any one time. You know what? I've been kind of avoiding saying this in videos for like uh, over a year now. There's been a very, very important thing that's happened in my life um, that I haven't mentioned. I think I'm finally ready to talk about it. Um, I don't. I don't really know why. I, ha- I I guess I just don't want pity comments, you know? I really don't want pity comments. I don't want people commenting, being like, I'm so sorry this happened to you. Just That's just annoying. Don't do that. I don't want I don't want your pity. I'm fine. I'm literally perfectly okay. Everything's fine. Um, so, um, some of you may have noticed, I guess it's kind of tough to talk about. So, some of you... Uh, uh, may have noticed that uh, I, I, I used to live with my mom, um, but now Dotsmite is staying and my mom is nowhere to be seen. Where did she go? Well, uh, <laughs> to put it bluntly, she's in a little box <laughs> uh, uh, in in uh, <clears throat> in December of 2019. My mom had had pains in her her abdomen went to the doctor um actually not 2019 2020 sorry um i went to the doctor and uh it was cancer and a year later she was dead so that's what happened um yeah 
it, that that will just happen. People will just die of cancer in front of you, and there's nothing you can do. So that that happened. Um, she died last year in December. So now I live on my own. That's pretty much the story. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I guess the reason I haven't brought this up is because I, I didn't I didn't really want to share it. Like while 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 my mom had was like in the process of dying slowly from cancer, I didn't want to. I was like, that's just weird to talk about online. Like I don't I don't want to. I don't. I don't. It just feels uncomfortable to put online. Um. So I didn't really want to talk about it back then, or while like during the year. Uh, um, yeah, I guess the, the, uh, I, like, I, this is the other reason is I don't know what to, like, there's not much to say, like, yeah, like, I think, um, yeah, there's just, there's just not much to talk about with it, it's just like, that like, yeah, no, no one really. Like, none of you really care, you know. You, you you never knew my mom or anything. Like it doesn't matter to you. And in terms of if you watch, I, I don't know if you watch these videos, maybe you you care about me for some god forsaken god knows reason. You're interested in what I have to say or what emotions I'm feeling. I have no idea why. Um, but uh, in terms of that, I guess the shocking thing is how how. Um, I guess easily I I I deal I dealt with it like I I don't like I I I kind of reached acceptance very quickly because obviously I'd had a year of knowing this was coming uh, to prepare myself and um, so yeah I guess I just kind of reached the uh, the acceptance stage um pretty much instantly obviously I, I grieved and stuff but I'm not saying that I'm I'm happy about the whole situation but uh I I'm 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 already making jokes about it and shit you know it just is what it is it's just a thing that happens people die but uh, I will say if I had trouble to make taking anything in life seriously before then I really have trouble taking anything in life seriously now. Like, like if it's just like you can just one day go to the doctor and then a year later be dead, it's like, like none of this has any like. That's how that's how quickly it, it can all. Like you know what I mean? It's very like Camus absurdism type beat. Well, I'm just like, yeah, it's difficult to take anything seriously once you realize how absurd that is. I mean, I've always kind of had a similar thing, but that definitely strengthened it, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think that's probably a fairly, you know, accepting the transience of all things kind of been my, my deal for a long time. I don't know if you can see that, but it says this too shall pass on my wall. Uh, yeah, I'm, I I know I'm kind of I I guess I'm like that's probably the most notable thing about it is that it, it like I'm not a complete like fucking wreck. I mean my house is a mess, but other than that, <laughs> like I'm not. I didn't sink into a deep depression or anything like that. I just sort of kept trucking, just kept moving. Like it didn't. I mean, obviously it affected me, but I'm, I mean, like I I didn't. It didn't didn't ruin me, which is maybe surprising. Um, cause I don't know. I think a lot of people with, with mental problems like me, they, they, uh, they end up being or coming across as somewhat delicate type, type of deal, right? Where it's like, if you, if you have depression or, or whatever, and it's like people end up being delicate or, uh, sensitive, but I'm the opposite. Like, like. 
I'm 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 very much a man about about these things. Like it just sort of, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. it. It's not like I didn't feel emotion. Obviously, that's that's that definitely not what happened. There was there was a lot of uh, emotions and sadness. But I'd say that's not like not. I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of surprised at how well I dealt with it. Um, and yeah, now it's basically oh, like it's it, like it's it's over. Like yeah, and I'm just I'm just keeping on going with my life, I guess. So there you go. There's the big update. Um, there's the big update in in um, that I've been that I've been keeping a secret from you guys. But now you know. There's the idea there's not really any reason to keep it a secret. Um, what I will be keeping a secret is my financial situation. That is that is a uh, that is for me to know and you to not know. Um. Yeah, I guess this is why I didn't mention it, because there's not much to talk about. Like, what am I going to say? I don't know. I feel like I should be espousing some sort of some sort of a big reveal type type moment. But there is, there, you know, and like there's not, what do what you say in situations like this? I guess it's very awkward. That's That's the main thing. Like because because I accepted it so quickly, I get I get to this is like the most fun thing about your mom dying, is that if you accept it really quickly, you get to you you get you get to like have fun fucking with normies. Uh, like I've had to make up do a lot of like phone calls with like switching over utilities bills to 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 my account and stuff like that, and um, it's 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 extremely funny being very blunt on the phone with these people. Um, like, <laughs> like, uh, like, um, uh, well, this account was in my mother's name, but unfortunately, she will not be able to continue making these payments on account of she's dead <laughs> and stuff like that. It's very funny. I find it extremely amusing. Like, just especially in person, get talking to normies and just flatly, just like very matter of factly, just just being like, um. Yeah, I don't know. It's it that that's been one of the that, that, that's been very entertaining for me. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's not really much else to talk about with regards to that. I think I should mention when I said she's in a little box. It's not a coffin. It's not like I'm keeping a coffin. It's a, it's it's ashes. She was cremated. That's maybe you got the wrong impression. That I've I've no crem, cremated ashes. Not 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 a not a coffin. <laughs> All right. So now we got that out of the way. I can go back to my regularly scheduled content. This is bringing me back to the old Denver days, man. It's bringing me back to the old Denver days. Keris is single-handedly reviving the OG Denpa days. Um, the new generation, the new Denpa generation, right? We had the OGs, me, Plunder, and Osaka Syndrome. Then the great Denpa schism took place, right? Now it's now now you got the old guard, me me and me and Osaka. Uh, then you got the new guard. You got Don't Smite, you got Kerosy, you got C, you got, you got, uh, for those who know, you got Horror Love, you got, uh, well, you can argue that Jelly Lane Cor- Corsus was old guard, but, you know, they, 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 they got their own unique flavor. They're like half Denta, half whatever the fuck they are. Shouts out. Um, but back in the day, this used to, it used to be always just like, Oh, I was watching this video, and then I'm recording a vlog responding to it. So that's what we're doing once again. So Karasu responded to my video in his video. 
KRS two. Uh, but but I said I think I could live without the internet, and he said I'm too autistic that I couldn't live without the internet. And you know what? I think I was lying to myself. I think I'm also too autistic to live without the internet. Um, I think what I was thinking at the time was like maybe not having the internet at home, but like theoretically, I could go to the library or whatever, torrent my animus, and then come home. You know, to to my my cabin in the fucking woods, my my uncle Ted, good good old Ted, uh, fucking cabin. I don't even know if that's true. Recently, I've been thinking a lot about how fragile all this infrastructure is, and like, um, I don't know. It's like, how how do I put it? Firstly, I, I'm like, I need to torrent all of Wikipedia. I need to download all of Wikipedia for a hard drive in case shit really hits the fan. I need a big fucking backup uh, battery that that'll power my, you know, maybe a Raspberry Pi for a, for for a, a few days. Um, that's pretty much what you need, right? So, I mean, the ultimate, my ultimate goal right now in terms of, like, super fucking prepper mode schizo shit is to have a thing, a, another spare thing pad um, and a big backup battery and a, a shit, either, like, basically a, a big hard drive or a shitload of hard drives as well with all of Wikipedia on them um, or, like, a good chunk of Wikipedia uh, and maybe, like, I don't know some some medical information or something, um, maybe some some guides on how to forage for wild foods and and how to grow your own food and stuff like that. Have all of that information on on a bunch of hard drives. Um, I mean, obviously the best way, like the problem, the, the the threat model here is this is this is my EMP threat model, right? Is is like a if there's a big EMP detonated, I want to have all of these electronics stored in like a, a self-built Faraday cage. Um, and then, like, stored in my attic or whatever. Um, obviously, that's a that's a that's a kind of a decent solution. Uh, but the best solution, like, I I I've just thought thought about it for a bit. And as much as a great solution that is, and Wikipedia and stuff, it would probably be more practical to just get uh, start printing that shit off, you know, or actually just buy books about like foraging and how to grow food and all of this stuff. Like, they, you know, unless my house burns down in a fire, um, an EMP is not going to destroy that information if it's, if it's written down in text form. So that's probably the best bet is to buy a bunch of books about, how, about um, farming and permaculture or whatever and, and foraging and stuff. So I think I'm, I might have to do that. Uh, you know, as much as it would be good, it, uh, like the ideal situation is everyone else is fucked and I still have my, my ThinkPad and my, my anime porn games. Uh, so that would involve um, setting up a, a some sort of, I, you know, like if only I didn't live in this fucking shithole where the sun doesn't shine ever. I mean, actually the sun's kind of shining, but... Basically, I want solar panels, and they're not even that expensive. They're not even like it's it's doable. Um, if I if I like manage my money correctly to get a proper solar setup, not like a a massive one, but enough to power a Raspberry Pi, um, which is really all you need. Uh, you know, I suppose maybe even better than holding a, holding ThinkPads would be to just have a Raspberry Pi because that's much cheaper. And can basically do all the all the basic stuff that I'm going to want to do in, involving like text, text, just te- simple text programs like or text editing, reading reading text. That's what I'm looking for. So that should be fine. So I guess I need to buy a, another Raspberry Pi, make a Faraday cage. But the 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 big expense here is going to be buying a one of those big battery packs, um, and even that's going to run out of charge eventually. So. You know, you you charge it from the mains, but uh, I guess it's it's always it, it feels like it's good to have one of those lying around, fully generally fully charged, um, in case there's a power cut. Um, so and I I need to be, I I don't know I need I need to make sure that I have many animes and and eroge uh, downloaded so that and stored on hard drives so that if there's a power cut or the internet goes down for an extended period of time. Um, that's more likely. I feel like um, 
the, the, the entire electricity grid going down for a long period of time is, is somewhat unlikely. Uh, it's not 100%, imp- it's definitely not impossible, but it, I'm talking like months here. I feel like it, like, this, I don't live in bumfuck nowhere in America. The, the electricity grid isn't going to go down for months. But it's possible uh, that it might go down for a few days. But more likely is that internet becomes uh, more difficult. And in that case, uh, having some sort of backup power system would be really ideal. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I need to. I, I I keep saying I need to. I need to. But I need to actually get on this shit. But I have. I should. I should have priorities here. My number one priority should be replacing the fan and thermal paste on my X six X two X two twenty and uh, lever booting my X sixty. Those should be my main priorities. So that the Intel management. I need to get rid of the fucking Intel management engine. It's incredibly spooky. It's so. I don't know how. It's very spooky. It's, it's it's constantly in the back of my mind. Everything I'm doing, I'm like, Intel is fucking watching me, man. Um, like it's it's not even a it's not even a meme. It's not even a it's not it's not even a conspiracy theory. They just are, and it's fucked. And my phone is watching me. Every word I speak into this camera is being sent directly to Google right now. Isn't that fucked up? I mean, I'm gonna up, I'm gonna I'm gonna voluntarily give this to Google. I'm gonna upload it. Um, I suppose there is some comfort in the knowledge that because that uh, this kind of goes to my 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 um, uh, hey you want AI world governments they're already here you're living in one you like ghost stories you you're in one you like AI world governments you're already in one because um, the idea being that uh, they collect so much data constantly terabytes and terabytes of data constantly uh they, they, they there's no way you can have a human sort through all of that to find what's useful this is actually why this is like one of the arguments for for pro government people like statists who are like it's probably a good thing to for the government to to uh you know the, the, we need the government to protect us from terrorism this is the argument they give like if you have that opinion and you're still against mass surveillance the argument is when you collect even more, and it's actually a fairly good argument. Yeah, like, uh, the fucking human systems before they, like, switch to AI systems, they're going to see, like, completely miss a bunch of, like, big terrorist attacks. Yeah, and no, they still continue to. They still continue to, but, like, the argument at the time, like, the 9 11 happened, was essentially that, like, uh, if it was an AI that had managed the data they correlated, 9-11 could have been prevented and stuff like that. But they already knew that 9-11 was going to happen. Yeah, they, 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 I mean, that's the base of Well, okay, I don't know how much of that I can say on YouTube, really. But um, I don't think, I don't think you, basically I'm saying I don't think you can generalize from 9-11. Yeah, but you know, the point is kind of a special that, like, case. They, they had the information, they but did. the humans missed it. But the, 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 the counter-argument to that is that the Boston bombing, they also had the information, yeah, yeah. but uh, and at that point they had advanced computer systems. Uh, it had, but the Boston bombers were captured as part of, uh, or like their, their their information was known as part of of the stuff Snowden leaked to Prism and stuff, yeah. right? But they 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 had, they're keeping track of so many people that it's impossible to know who's act, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it doesn't work. But above all of that. Who do you think's actually keep, who's doing the job of keeping track? It's 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 definitely not a human being. It's it's definitely filtered massively through layers of um, algorithms. And I would hazard a guess. You you know you know how all of the the major like social media platforms that also have to deal with terabytes of petabytes of of, of user data, they have all ended up using AI to manage that data because it's really good at doing stuff like that because AIs need a massive um, sample set. And so they're really, when you have a massive sample set, that's the sort of thing that AIs work well with. So I think it's, it's, it's a hundred percent likely that all of these uh, three letter agencies use AI to filter and manage and database the information they collect off of the public. And, and that massively, that's going to obviously be a, a big uh, influence on the decision making process in that that they do so a i world government already here you're already being managed and controlled by a i systems twenty four seven sometimes semi voluntarily on on your social media networks of choice and also involuntarily through the, through prism and 
and and Five Guys, Burgers and Fries, Frowning Home. Uh, how did I start talking about that? Oh yeah, there's so there is some sense of that that is that is the cope basically the cope the cope for they're collecting all of my data and and they're, they're always listening is that because they're collecting so much data and they're always listening to everyone, um, it's unlikely that that I'm noticed. It's kind of like tw the way YouTube and Twitter work. Like that's one of the reasons why Mastodon and and the Fediverse ends up being shit moderation wise compared to um, Twitter and stuff is because on Twitter, even though you there are certain bands that will get there are certain you know people get banned for no reason all the time and and people get banned for bullshit all the time. Um, generally speaking, you're going to go unnoticed if you don't draw attention to yourself. Um, whereas on these smaller platforms, because there's fewer people around to monitor, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the cops, the jannies, the internet cops, the, uh, what do I call them? Apes, right? Something like that? <laughs> what the, I had a word for them. Um, whatever, the, the, the fucking student ethics committee of, of, of Mastodon of your Mastodon instance, you know, who's a fucking Redditor who lives in his, or uh, probably there, they, let's, be, let's be real here, they probably live in their basement, uh, or, you know, whatever, has enough time on their hands to monitor everything you say and, and ban you for, for telling them they're a state actor. Uh, whereas the NSA, you know, they they got a lot of shit to do. Um, they like remember the NSA has let. Um, how do I say this on YouTube? Uh, the the NSA has let people who distribute illicit images through various darknet platforms go in court. They have dropped cases against these 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 scumbag people who distribute uh, illicit images. Um, they, they have. This has happened twice, to my knowledge, where they have let them go in court uh, in, and, and like dropped cases against them in order so that they didn't have to reveal vulnerabilities in tour. Um, like they don't give a fuck. I don't. I don't. I shouldn't have to say that. But if they if they'll do that, then for for those guys who I assume are higher priority than than me, then um, then I, you know at, there is a certain level of of um, security through, uh, I don't even know what the, what that would, what, what would the word be there? Do you, like, gray, gray man type security, basically. That's like. right. Is this kind of what I like, mean by kind of really quick? Yeah, I mean, it's a cope. I mean, it's a cope, but like, for me, it's like nothing I do is know that we're not with five guys through it isn't quite secure, but my phone. I, I think that, yeah, I mean, that's just true. Uh, but then again, you, you got you. I I always end up thinking about uh, that that faggot uh, Count Dankula, You know. Yeah, that's true. Like, the, he like he he did a perfectly innocent little thing and ended up in fucking jail for it. To be fair, Brit Bongers. <laughs> to be fair, Brit Bongers. That's true. But I'm not sure if you've noticed where we are, don't you? I mean, yes, but I think we actually Lucky. In, 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 enjoy Russia. Enjoy. <laughs> uh, this was just about whether I'd be okay having the internet or not. I I don't know. I just want I want a big. Uh, I was watching The Spirited Man yesterday, and he had, and there was a, there was a good that 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 episode of The Spirited Man was a very effective piece of advertising. Um, although I'm not sure if I'll go with the the brand that actually paid him to advertise, but. Um, it was a, it was an ad for uh, a big uh, battery, basically, like a giant rechargeable battery, and uh, I think that seems like a good idea. Something like that, keep it in a Faraday cage or something to protect it from EMPs. That's kind of a good idea. But once you get like once you start thinking about being a prepper. Like, all of this stuff doesn't make any sense if you can't get food, right? And living in a big urban center like I do is is the worst place to be when shit hits the fan. Um, well, it's actually debatable. I've, I've, I have seen some people say that, like, uh, you'll, if, if, if the government survives, they'll prioritize you in that situation. 
Um, but then you're like going to be dependent on rations or bread lines or whatever. Um, I had when in school with fish sticks, like I, I got like a bunch of canned food and shit because I thought they were going to be like really harsh fucking lockdowns and shit, but I just kind of didn't do anything. So, so I'm assuming that like if shit hits the sun, things are just going to be like semi normal for most people. Um, I mean, it depends on the threat model. That's true, but like also in the same way that like things are happening in the UK, like for most people things are just kind of normal. I'm, I'm talking about supply lines, basically, like yeah, supply yeah, chains yeah. breaking down fundamentally. But yeah, like, I'm just like, ever since that happened, I'm just like, maybe these, maybe like the neoliberal social rate that these supply lines are way more resilient than I gave them credit for. They're pretty damn resilient. I, I, I think that's true. I, I think most, most supply lines are especially food supply lines, you won't be getting your, you you, you might not be getting your uh, lobster from, from or whatever, but uh, you're going to get enough food to eat. It's it's not difficult to grow enough food for yeah. a population these days. Um, and now the U.S., you're going to have to enjoy eating a lot of corn, but you, I guess you already do, <laughs> because your government fucked up. Uh, but... Uh, over here in the UK, we're we're like listed at. I I I've talked about this before, but the UK is is listed at like I think number four on the the list of countries that would do best if global supply lines collapsed. Like you want to be in an island nation because they're economically incentivized to be fairly self sufficient. Um, and you. I think New Zealand was at the top. I want to see this too. I'll see if I can find it. Um, oh God, how did I? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's basically because the UK can grow enough food because it's a big agriculture thing, island nation. But also the UK uh, does a lot of wind wind energy and uh, stuff like that. It's also good for good for, for collapse moment, epic collapse moment. Uh, yeah, supply chains, who needs them? As an anarchist... <laughs> I don't understand supply chain. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just browsing Twitter and still recording for some reason. Let's get back to uh, this Caressi video. I, ha I have a fucking problem. I have a problem. I have a serious problem, and it's time for me to admit this publicly, um, because admitting that you have a problem is the first step to getting better. I'm, I'm, I'm eating way too many tendies. I'm eating way too many fucking tendies, man. And also, that Kerasi was talking about in his video... Uh, that like if if like if you're a rich neat, you can just get delivery to your house or take out and never have to go outside. I don't know how it is in like in other places, but but here, getting groceries delivered is is often free. Um, uh, yeah, like pretty much everyone does it. Um, it it's like there's there's not really like if you're doing a a big. I, this is one of the the things that's like. Why London is good as a as a not non car car dependent city if you don't have a car, because a lot of people don't have cars. Um, you know, if you need to do a a big grocery shop for the week, most people just get it delivered. I feel like, and yeah, that delivery is normally free if you buy over a certain threshold of, of items. Like normally from Iceland, where where I get my tendies, it's if you buy if you spend over forty quid then delivery is free. Um, and I normally spend over 40 quid because that's going to last a, you know, it's enough food to last a while. It's mostly frozen, hence why the shop is called Iceland. I feel like I've already talked about this before. Anyway, on Iceland, I was like, fuck it. What if I try every flavor of tendies that they have? Because they have many different flavors. They have like salt and pepper ones, southern fried flavor ones, hot and spicy flavor ones, Indian pakora flavored ones, hoisin flavored ones, some with breading, some with batter, some with like, they have all of these different types, basically. And so, and uh, 
I was like, what if I bought one of all of them so that we can try all of them and decide which one? <laughs> and then it just it just got out of control. I was thinking in my mind, as opposed to thinking anywhere else, that, um, you know, what are tendies? They're just chicken with some breading on them. Like, it's not, how can it be unhealthy? Like, it's just, it's not like I'm frying them, right? They go in the oven, they're baked. It, they're just breaded, baked breaded chicken. There's nothing unhealthy about that. And they're very cheap. It's a really good source of cheap protein and meat because it's only three pounds for a big pack, and that's like three meals worth of tendies. So it's about one pound per meal, which is a pretty damn good deal for chicken that tastes pretty good. Um, and so I was there the whole time, like, you know, I don't, I don't, this seems like a perfect deal. Like, it's just really cheap frozen chicken. It, chicken chickens are pretty good for you like there's nothing wrong about eating a lot of chicken um what's the what's the problem here um but it it has occurred to me that these tendies do not just have chicken and breading uh they have a, a whole bunch of like oily like seed oils in them uh to make it taste fried um which is probably quite bad probably need to be like if it like when it comes to eating eating like a like a broke person uh, i'm i was i've been kind of shocked by talking to osaka syndrome recently and uh, them saying that she she lives in a, a food desert which is not something i've ever really heard of before um and, and this is this is i feel like this is entirely an american phenomenon like like other places that you might live where there's not as much choice in terms of what food you can get like they get, they're going to be local produce, right? I would imagine, right? Like let's say you live in, I don't know, Indonesia or something, uh, where you might not have the same level of choice as you would in a grocery store. Uh, you know, a lot of people in 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 Southeast Asia shop at, at local markets and stuff. You're not going to have as much variety of choice as you would in a, a, a Western grocery store. But all of that food is going to be locally produced and and pretty good and delicious basically when it comes to eating like a poor fag uh you you either go two routes you go the american poor fag route or you look to your you look to history you look to tradition you look to your ancestors um and you and you eat like a, a medieval peasant and really that's what you want to be doing you want to be aiming for the diet of a medieval peasant i found the youtube channel I don't know how I ended up here, to be honest. Well, actually, I, I have a vague recollection that I was like, I was in, in my hypnagogic state. I was like, I should buy a bespoke suit. I can't call myself a man if I don't own a bespoke Savile Row suit. I bet I could afford one if I, if I managed my money correctly, which is not true. Those suits are extremely expensive. I could not afford a fucking Savile Row suit. Uh, nonetheless, I think that led me down the path to cigar videos. Um, yeah, this is the video, um, by this guy called Kirby Allison, who, who has, has all the mannerisms of Ben Shapiro, uh, I would put it, I would say he's a, he's definitely a Ben Shapiro type guy, um, and he makes videos, very weird fucking videos, he's a very weird guy, like, he's a very awkward guy, and he's kind of like a, a, I, I don't know if there's a word for it, but like, a a Britonophile, like he 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 sort of loves Britain and British culture, but he's like very painfully American and doesn't understand it. But I think he's like really into the idea of like being a proper British gentleman. Like he wears these suits, and he he uh, yeah, like all of his videos look suits, a wet shave, Cuban cigars, how to wear green. I would not trust him on any fashion advice because he looks like a retard. I, w I was just, I was just fascinated by the existence of this like weird fucking culture of like, it's it's like people who are like considered and part of like upper class society, but not because they participate directly in the affairs of the upper class, but because they are craftsmen or workers or or merchants who sell goods to specifically appeal to the upper class. And so they are like by tangent members of the upper class, even though, you know, they're not in, in the government or finance sectors or anything like that. They're just selling cigars or selling, selling suits or something like that. Right. It's like this weird little 
fucking industry of people who are like both simultaneously like craftsmen or like uh you know people who would be traditionally considered uh sort of working class ish like for example like if you look back i don't know they're like above the peasantry but but not not in the ruling class but they're like specifically craftsmen who serve the rule i don't know it's very weird it's very fucking weird like they just talk about like it's like they're incredibly invested in um appearing integrated with the upper echelons of society uh they 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 and it kind of breaks down the whole barriers of of class divides where it's like these these are like essentially just randos who own a shop but they are like uh they just have the pure aesthetics of the upper class but then what differentiates that from anyone who's actually a member of the ruling class like what's what's the actual difference there like it's not like it's a difference of familial lines because a lot of these people have been in the same family business for years and, and generations so it's not like they don't have a family tradition of being in the upper like what there's not really any fundamental difference uh you know there's not really any fundamental difference and so that kind of breaks down this whole it, it it makes it seem like class, like the 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 differences in in the sort of attitudes of 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 the of the ruling class compared to the 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 proles, the rest of us, are like more than anything aesthetic, and they are an affectation on their part. You know, I think it's important to remind myself and to remind those of you out there who who follow this channel and might also have interest in these types of things about the reality of supply chain collapse, civilizational collapse, these sorts of things, or mass economic collapse, or environmental collapse, and what actually happens in these situations. Uh, because it's very different from the mainstream American prepper, libertarian, hoard guns and ammo type deal. Now, if America collapsed, I think because of their meme about what collapse looks like, it might turn out to look like that. But if you look at ha what happens normally when civilizations decline, a lot of people die and there are roaming gangs and violent crime is going to be or violence is going to increase however the people who survive are normally not the ones going around killing people and stealing their shit uh the problem with killing people and stealing their shit is eventually you get killed and your shit gets stolen or you run out of people to kill and steal their shit uh, the people who last the, the actual way to survive cataclysm is to be is is a uh, to be a bit of a hippie about it, you know. Unfortunately, the people who survive best are the people who build co strong communities and work together. Because one person or one family or one group of small small group of friends can't do that much, uh, but a whole community uh, who who works together can can achieve a whole lot. So it's sort of a S curve, right? A sort of reverse S curve where like the difference between having one person working on something and two people is huge. Um, like one person versus two people is a really big difference. Two people versus three people is slowly going to even out and sort of sort of plateau. And and people on K know this. Um, that's why they put so much emphasis on comms in, in a shit hits the fan scenario. The problem with, with K is, uh, is that they don't have enough farmers in their midst, so they're going to run out of food. It's it's a very bad idea to be thirsting after social power in a, in in a collapse situation because that's putting yourself directly in the fucking sight line of a bunch of other people. That's that's putting yourself at massive risk. It's a bad idea to seek out violence. It's a bad idea to seek out conflict. It's a bad idea to seek out power because that requires those things. Um, you're, what you want is to seek collaboration and, and collaborators. As much as this sucks for people like me who don't really like that sort of, like, talking to people, you know, regardless of how much you, you like or don't like talking to people, um, the best thing you can do is, is have these sort of soft skills of um, knowing what the fuck you're doing, 
uh, a little bit, just any knowledge that could be useful, any knowledge of edible plants, any knowledge of any of this sort of, any of, of anything that you could imagine would be useful, is that's going to be the thing that's in high demand. Having a cursory idea of how to preserve food is good, like, this is the fucking thing about these retards, right, who, who just hoard canned food. Canned food sucks. Like, it's, the, it's, it's not a good way of preserving food um, for, for, like, a, a fucking, like, hideout. Canned food is good if you're on a, vo- on a ship. It's, it's basically good if you're on a ship. Like, if you watch Townsend's on YouTube, as I'm sure many of you do, you're probably more set than you even realize. And, and here's the thing that, that, that might be controversial is that I, I honestly don't think physical fitness is that important when it comes to, to shit hits the fan scenarios, most of them. Um, unless it's a shit hits the fan scenario where you need to run away from something really fast. Any situation you're in that requires you to be, to have some level of physical aptitude, by simply being in that situation, your body is going to pretty quickly gain the fitness it needs to do those tasks. I mean, obviously, it's good to maintain a, a good level of physical fitness. And, I'm, you know, I would never say it's retarded to do that. It's definitely a smart idea for, for a multitude of reasons. But in terms of a shit hits the fan situation, let's be honest here. Uh, if you're being attacked by someone, they're going to have a weapon and you're going to be fucked no matter how strong you are. Um, uh, you know, it's going to be about what weapons you're using. It doesn't really matter, you know. Even if you're a fucking bodybuilder, if I come at you with a, a slingshot and I know what I'm doing, I can I can take you out from a distance type deal. Bodybuilders aren't immune to knives. Bodybuilders aren't immune to guns. Bodybuilders aren't, you know, that's, none of that's going to matter. How strong you are isn't really going to help you in a fight other than, well, no, most fights, do, the fights don't last. In real life, like outside of like combat sports where there are really strict rules about what you can and can't do, in real life, fights are extremely short. They're very short. And it's normally about who attacks. It's normally about attacking uh, as quickly, like fast and hard, Japan style, like like samurai movie style. One swipe, one clean swipe. That's normally how fights actually work in the real in the real world. <laughs> I mean, I can actually show you what I have before the JPEG is even jade or pegged. What I'm doing is downloading simplifier.neocities.org. Because I feel like that's useful information to have available offline. Here, I'll turn the internet off. On the hardware switch. Boom. No more internet. Look, you can see the light is off. No internet. 
Here we go. Let's let's get some power.html. Boom. We got everything we need. We got everything we need here. Labor theory of value, circular reasoning. So the mud pies argument, right? If I make mud pies all day and put a lot of labor into it, but they have no value, I can't sell them to anyone, I can't use them for anything. So in what way are they valuable, right? Excluding socially useful, like the concept of socially useful labor, which is ill-defined and uh, unscientific because you're all about science, right? Um, why, why, you know, the, 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 the labor theory of value believer would say, well, you're confusing exchange value and use value with intrinsic value, right? That the, the labor is, is what produces intrinsic value, uh, which is not always represented by exchange value or use value. Use value obviously depends on a variety of variables, and exchange value also depends on market fluctuations, supply and demand, blah, blah, blah. So uh, we're not talking about those things. We're talking about intrinsic value. And I would say, okay, so how do you determine something's intrinsic value? And then they would say, well, it de it's dependent on the amount of labor put in. And I would say, well, why is labor valuable? And then they would say, well, because labor produces intrinsic value. And I would say, well, how do you determine intrinsic value? Like, it only works if you presuppose that it's already correct. All that he can with the refugees minister to make this process... Well, you can take your... Speedy you're going old. Yeah. You're going old. I think my... Well, I'll take quite a little bit of friend over here. Five Nights at Freddy's is such a weird concept. I think the biggest flaw in democracy, like the worst result it has on the average person's life, is that it, 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 it democracy has it was the original social media. It makes people think that their opinions in some way matter. Who gives a fuck what political opinions you have? What stuff? Hide my address. What is all this stuff? What is all this stuff? Boom! AMG Ryzen, bitch! 500, 5,000! It's easy. It's not even difficult. Nothing in the world is more fun than, than, than doing, like... Did I ever call something about Rick and Morty yet? We're about to spit some dangerous facts here. These are some facts that they don't want you to know. My experience my 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 alarmingly effective experience with Lemurian hypersticional time sorcery. Uh, HRT has has very little to do with gender affirmation, and it's really a, a performance enhancing drug to allow you to function under capitalism. It's a it's a drug you take which aligns you with capital, right? It turns you into a cat girl. And I think the, the correct way to think of gender is it as a matter of flows and intensities. I love Star Trek. I love Star Trek. I love Star Trek. I love Star Trek. I love Star Trek so much. It's the best thing I've made. I love Star Trek. I love Star Trek. Star Trek is the best TV show ever made. It's amazing. TNG I'm talking about. I have, I, I'm not so into the original series. Um, and one of the big reasons I'm not so into the original series is because it lacks one of the things that's the best about TNG, which is um, that uh, Star Trek is it's like submarine warfare, right? Like this is, I'm not the first person to make this comparison. It's like submarine warfare. You you do not want to get in a fight. You do not if you get in a fight, people are going to die. You do and you're a reasonable captain of a ship, right? You're not suicidal. You don't want to get. It's not Star Wars. You don't want to just be fucking killing people and, and dying because that's a big fucking deal, right? And you have to uphold diplomatic relations with all the other people. You don't want, you're just going to get fucked. If you, if you start attacking random ships, you're going to get fucked and people are going to die, and that's your responsibility. So you don't do that, right? Instead, you try and avoid combat by being a good diplomat, which is so much more interesting than just shoot the guy. It's so much infinitely more interesting. 
And that's why Star Trek's good. Star Trek's so good. I like Star Trek. If you haven't seen Star Trek The Next Generation, then firstly, what are you doing? Get on that shit. Um, if you actually want to watch Star Trek, this is not how this clip was supposed to start, by the way. Uh, if you actually want to watch Star Trek, I highly recommend going to the website, uh, Let's Watch Star Trek. Uh, let me let me get it up for you. If you, if you go to Let's Watch Star Trek, and then... Um, let me, let me. Oh, fuck. I, I fucked up. No, oh, no. Oh, no. This is all gone wrong. This has all gone terribly wrong. Okay. You go to letswatchstartrek.com, um, and then you, you go to Episode Guide TNG. Uh, and this this is a great episode guide uh, that, that it has some essential episodes that you should definitely watch. This is a good place to start, I would say. Um, and if you want to watch the series, um, it has each episode with a rating um, uh, from, from 1 to one to three, I, I believe. Uh, here's a taste test. It's, this is just a great guide. It, it has a rating of, of one, of, of zero to five, right? So zero being painfully bad, one being bad, two mediocre, possibly worth skipping, three generally enjoyable, four great, five classic. And it has every single episode uh, from TNG rated, and their ratings are accurate. I, I agree with 100% with their ratings. And... Um, I would say this is a good. This is the best way to watch Star Trek. Uh, they also have um, uh, stuff about like um, stuff that you have to watch for continuity reasons, even though the episodes aren't that good. Stuff like that, like all listed out, um, like the child, for example, or uh, the emissary, um, or Skin of Evil. Like these are. It, it's it's great. It's great. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, so you should watch Star Trek, you fucking idiot. What are you doing? Watch, watch TNG. It's the best TV show ever made. I don't say that lightly. I've seen all the other good TV shows. That's not true. I haven't seen all the other good TV shows. But I, I don't need to, because Star Trek's the best one. Um, the, the, the best thing about Star... Like, I think we should all aim to be like the crew of the Enterprise. I think that if you want a good moral, ethical compass to follow... Um, then Star Trek is, a, is 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 way better than any philosophy textbook than you're ever going to be, or you know anything. Uh, this this is what it's all about. Uh, you you can see like um, how to behave. It's a it's a great guide on how to behave. And if you're autistic, hey, you you just look at Data, and he's going to be your most relatable character probably. And um, you can see that his understanding of of how to behave and and interact well in a social environment, and you should hold people to the standards of the TNG crew. Uh, that's what I do with my friends. Uh, I don't think about it consciously, but I think I should start. Hold people to the standards of like, would this be acceptable on the Enterprise? What would Picard's reaction to this behavior be? What would Geordi's reaction to this behavior be? What would you know? And and that's how it's a, it's a good way to be like. That's just you, to to sort out the 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 idiots, right? Um, you might also relate to Barkley. There's a few good Barkley episodes. Barkley, Lieutenant Barkley, is a character in TNG who's like autistic and like Asperger's basically. Like he uh, kind of socially awkward, even though he's he's kind of smart engineer guy but uh, not, like, the smartest in the world. Well, except for that one time where he gets transformed into the smartest man in the universe. But that's a great episode. Uh, TNG is great. It's, like, I highly recommend watching this clip, right? It's called uh, Data Explains How to Be Second in Command on YouTube. And uh, I think this is, this is a good, this is from an episode where Data is temporarily put in, uh, in charge of the Enterprise because Riker and Picard are unavailable. Um, and uh, I think that this is the ultimate goal of, like, amicable relationships between mature people, right? Like, like Data has a problem with Worf. He's, he, he like, a... Right, Worf, Worf is not, not doing his job properly. He's, he's, he's not... Uh, 
being a good second in command. And so Data takes him aside privately, right, as it should be, and has a mature discussion with him about, like, here's my problems with your behavior, right? Like, if you, if, you know, talk, talk to me. They have a discussion, and then the Worf is like, I see, like, accept it, takes the criticism like a, like a fucking Klingon, like a man, right, with honor, takes the criticism on board, and, uh, you know, makes an effort, makes a real effort, apologizes, uh, they both they both apologize. They're both very mature. This is how it should be. This is this is this is positive positive masculine role models if there ever were any. Um, you're not going to get better than Star Trek. It's just the best thing ever made. At some point, it got away from me. I'm kind of just spouting meaningless opinions. Um, if anything, this vlog has always been narcissistic. I don't think there's anything wrong with narcissism. Some of my favorite people are narcissists. Um, but there was always something more, something artsy. I mean, there's nothing artsy about this. There's nothing interesting about it. It's just listening to me spout my retard opinions for hours and hours and hours. And no one does it, obviously. So I should uh, f get on that. I should start start artsying it a bit more. I should get it a bit more. So I'm actually saying something, not just saying whatever I'm saying, but saying something deeper. Not that it has to be, and for a long time it hasn't, but I'm back. Like, I'm supposed to be back, right? But I'm not really back. I'm supposed to be back on my schizo shit. But I'm not really back on my schizo shit. Uh, I'm supposed to be back on my going insane. Or well, I'm supposed to be saying something artsy. Saying something meaningful. But I'm not doing that anymore. The medium is the message in this case. Um, but still, there could be depth to it that I haven't uncovered. There definitely is, and um, I just don't have any particular ideas anymore about that. Same with music, but it's because I need to do more drugs or something, I don't know. I fucking hate April Fool's Day! I hate April Fool's Day! I hate it! Well, I don't entirely hate it. Happy birthday to my brother, whose birthday is April Fool's Day. Shouts out to him. That's the only good part of April Fool's Day. The rest, it fucking sucks, okay? Every, oh, oh, welcome to the day where everything is a fucking lie for no fucking re Oh, look, how funny, ha! <laughs> you get to see a bunch of stupid people making stupid fucking videos. It's, oh, isn't this fun? Okay, this was a pretty good, this was a pretty good joke. This was a pretty good joke video. Okay, it's time to rate all of the funny videos on my feed from April Fool's Day. <laughs> okay, what have we got? Toxic economics. <laughs> Hilarious. No, a square in vanilla Minecraft. <laughs> Isn't that funny? A square in vanilla Minecraft. <laughs> you can already do that. <laughs> oh, the unlucky tug, Thomas the Tank Engine channel, did a Peter, the history of Peter Griffin. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Best of Seth Etherman, and it's only two two seconds long. Haha, <laughs> there's no actual best. Oh, isn't that so funny? Fuck you. Fuck you, bitch. Why am I subscribed to you? I hate you. I hate you. You're not funny. You're not funny. You've never been funny. Die. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Oh, Survive the Jive. This isn't even a joke video. Yeah, I'm subscribed to Survive the Jive. I will build my power level any second I want. Bitch, what you gonna do? 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 Oh, ha ha, cooking channel reviews a MacBook. Ha ha, isn't that funny? No, it's not funny. It's not funny. Ha ha ha, Master June makes a, a, a fake task for an, an, an mobile version of SMW. Ha ha, isn't that funny? Yes, I'm getting microplastics in me. You think I give a fuck about my... I kind of do, actually. I should stop doing this. <laughs> So, after using this bottle for, like, a couple of days, 1.5 liters, my old bottle, I believe, was, like, 700 milliliters or something, and probably, probably more than that. Let's say a liter, to be polite. 
So my my regular white water bottle, I uh, put it in the dishwasher, which is why I was using the plastic Evian bottle. Um, and then uh, I, I get it out of the dishwasher and I look inside of it under the light, and there's all this, like, there's some, like, grime in there. There's some grime in there that didn't get out of the dishwasher. And I'm trying to scrub it off, and it's not coming off. And I'm like, this water bottle has served me well for, like, four years. Um, but after using a bigger one, I already kind of want a bigger one because it's much nicer not having to go get up every ten seconds to refill it. So... I bought a fucking bigger one. Hi, editing, thank you here. Um, so this video was like four and a half hours of footage, and I've edited it down to just about an hour and a quarter. I could edit it further, but um, the, the, there's a the biggest section that I would edit down is the section uh, just after I talk about how my mom died, and so that section needs to be long in order to give give you guys, the audience, like an emotional buffer zone to be ready for, for the more upbeat segments later in the video um, and that segment. So, like, that needs to be a long segment in between so that, so that you, for the pacing. So that's fine. Um, uh, I, I thought in this video I would try and, like, take this, like, not do my typical just string all the clips together into a, a four-hour vlog, but instead try and just, like, edit out the sort of get it to be a bit denser and get rid of the, the stuff that doesn't matter so much and try and make it a bit funnier. Well, I, I like, take take a lot of the clips of what I said, like, because I, I wasn't really that happy with a lot of the clips in this video. Like, that bit where I say something about, like, HRT is a performance in housing drug that turns into a cat girl, that was a clip from the middle of, like, a a 25-minute long rant about, like, my gender politics. And as I was editing, I was like, no one fucking cares about this. Like, who wants to hear this? No one. So I, I just, like, cut out the funny bits and, and <laughs> you know... Uh, so, like, a, a lot of the clips were like that, were stuff that I wasn't really that happy with. But that's fine, you know. Normally, I would just not not upload them, but, uh, you know, fuck it. Uh, the reason I'm recording this segment is because the video doesn't have an ending. It just ends with me sipping from, from this water bottle. So, this is the ending to the video. Uh, uh, we bought a computer. The computer, the, the, I guess this is the big life update. We bought a computer... Like like all the parts to build a computer, a big desktop PC that should be like fairly future proof, and uh, it doesn't fucking work. It's like day four of of not having this computer work. We've tried everything. We've asked people who know about computers. We've tried like shit doesn't fucking work. Uh, I don't know how to fix it. No one knows how to fix it. We don't even really know what's broken. We have some ideas. We don't really know what's broken, which fucking sucks. Uh, because at the same time, Dolzmite's ThinkPad X230 is kind of shitting itself. Uh, the, the fan's broken, and the the charging port is, like, really loose, so it doesn't charge properly. Um, and and uh, all of my spare laptops are too low power to play the video games that Dolzmite wants to play. Um, which is kind of why we bought a, a, a desktop in the first place. But the desktop doesn't fucking work. Should have just bought a pre-built. Fuck! I, it's so annoying. I should have... I, I should have I should have stepped in and been like, what if we just build a what if we can't put it together? What if we write a pre built? But I didn't I didn't think I just thought Dolce Mate knows what, what they're doing, but but uh, Dolce Mate didn't know what they're doing. It wasn't a problem with anything Dolce Mate did. We we have no idea why it fell apart. Dolce Mate did did everything correctly. Um, but yeah, that's so that's the big problem in my life right now is not having that desktop that I paid for mostly partly. Uh, work so that's that's the, the the that's the thing and then the other big thing there's not really any other big things um, that bit where I talked about tendies in the video stop eating tendies no more tendies allowed just eating normal chicken um, and other foods fish beef you know all of the all the classic foods that you get <laughs> um I'm, I'm intermittent fasting. I don't remember if I mentioned that in a video. So no food for me right now, but that's fine. Um, uh, 
anything else that would be what would be a good, a good ending you know like I was thinking the perfect ending for this video would be a bunch of like CSGO frag montage clips but uh, I don't have any because I haven't really been playing that much CS lately uh, because I was thinking wait, saving it to, to, to go ham on the fucking desktop but that doesn't seem to be happening also I had to uninstall CS in order to have space on my hard drive to edit this video so that fucking sucks but it's fine it is possible to edit off of an external hard drive. I just I never bother to do it because it like sl slows. Every it's not. I don't have any SSDs. Like they're they're all hard, hard disk drives, so it's it's kind of slow as fuck to edit off of one of them. Um, and also, if at some point like I jiggle it and it accidentally comes unplugged, then the whole thing corrupts and it's really fucking annoying. And as I found out from fucking experience. So the ending, satisfying ending of the video. We don't know how to do these around here. We never figured it out really. Uh, um, 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 you know how much times I have to fucking edit out all my ums? So many of these edits just ums. Like, so many of these edits are just, just ums. Like, all of this, like, it's ums. It's so annoying. I wish I could speak properly.